Right. Get everywhere. There, there's, there's, right. you know, it's, it's, it's calmer, but it's no less stupid. That's we, that's the weird part. It's just like stupidity with like less special effects. It's like the difference between, um, it's like the difference between Batman forever and salt burn. There you go. Um, stupidity with less special effects. I, <laughs> I don't know that I would ever have put those movies in, in, in any kind of comparison, really. Yeah. Well, my, my brain is a bit of a blender. So, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, this is not as bad because Otherwise, this has been kind of a slow week. It's it's early January. Tends, things tend to be kind of slow, except, you know, in the real world where people are still doing terrible. Tootsie fruitsie. But it's it's kind of been a slow news week. I guess people are just, you know, getting over the holidays. Yeah. The, the, they're, everybody's taking it easy. They're back. They, they don't want to get too stupid. They don't, they don't want to yeah. set too much on fire. Everybody's still pretending they're going to keep their New Year's resolutions. Right, right. People are doing dry January. Which I don't under What is the oh, whole yeah. bit with dry January? I don't I keep seeing that on the social medias and I don't understand it. It's you don't drink for all of January. Why? I don't know. Yeah, I because it doesn't no. seem like you carry that forward. You just don't drink in January, and then you go back to drinking however much you were before. Like, I, I barely drink as it is now, you know? Yeah. And, like, it's not like you can, it's not like, we're not camels. Like, we can't hydrate enough in January to carry us through the next 11 months. Like, that's not going to work. Doesn't matter how much water you drink now. If you start living on White Claw February 1, you're still fucked. <laughs> I just, I, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, these things that people like this, the, the dry January and the no nut November and the all, I don't get it. That one I really don't get. Cause yeah. I don't even understand. Like I understand the benefit of not drinking. Uh, I don't really understand the benefit of no, no November. I don't understand people, which is weird. Cause I do a show about, I, I, I do a show about people. So. That's weird. Ugh. Anyway, that having been said, let's get into this week because it's while it isn't quite as well, like, not as spicy. We're we're, we're kind of we're, we're on Taco Bell spicy. That that's what the, we are this week. Okay. Each week, Catherine. Yeah, if you're a dead air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? The first one, we're starting a little slow, but it's still good God, what the fuck? Um, where was this? This is Murray, Utah. So lonely. So if you manage to get away with a crime, like scot free, like you got away with it. I don't understand why you would press your luck like this unless you're really, 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 really stupid. Or just really want to be president. You know, the president is total immunity, you know, that, that always. He has to be able to do anything he wants. Otherwise, meh. anyway. Murray police car thieves arrested after returning to same dealership to purchase second car days later. Now this this is they, they got clever and they got really fucking dumb. Two women allegedly used fake personal information to buy a 2024 Mazda CX-30 from Tim Dale Dahl. I think it's Tim Dahl Mazda. On December 30th, they were arrested Friday after they got greedy and returned for a second vehicle six days after taking the first. On one, Come on. 
January 5th, I responded to Tim Dahl Mazda, where one of the employees stated that Gabrielle and Larie were now on the scene trying to purchase another vehicle. On December 30th, uh, visit the dealership. Larie put a false social security number on the applications, then what actually belonged to her. Larie gave the, the dealership a photocopy of a fake Arizona license plate. Uh, Larie provided a fake 1 800 contacts pay stub. Marie and Gabrielle filled out uh, and signed the motor vehicle lease form with Mazda agreeing to buy the vehicle for uh, $31,332. A few days later, employees of the dealership became suspicious because Gabrielle and Marie did not make a down payment on time. Fun fact, if you ask an Irish person to say that price, particularly one from Kerry, they will pronounce each of those threes completely differently. Thirty-one thousand three hundred and thirty-two dollars and eighty cents. Three. Thirty-two. Thirty-one thousand three hundred. Yeah. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Yeah. Uh, so at this point, in th at, 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 at original, they had fake Social Security, fake ID, fake everything. No paper trail to themselves, right? They had effectively drove off with the car. They had effectively gotten the fuck away with. They had, they got the car, they walked out of there, they had a car with no way to trace them aside from the police, <laughs> but no way to trace them. They were perfect crime. And then Gabrielle and Larry were now on scene trying to purchase another vehicle. Baker was using a false name. Uh, Baker admitted the driver's license and pay stub were fake after getting arrested. Social security number Gabrielle put on the forms was also not a valid size social security number. She got the number off the internet and knew it did not belong to her. During the purchase process, Gabrielle provided false information on her credit application. Social security number Gabrielle provided belonged to another actual person. Um, Here's my question. Did they try to buy a second car using all the same fake information? No, no, no. They just went back online and got different fake information. But here's I don't know which is dumber because car dealerships like they know you. Right. It's not like going into Walmart where they see 400 people a day. Like it's a car dealership. How many cars do you sell a day? So they remember you from week to week. I'm not familiar with Utah. Is this the only car dealership in all of Utah? Is that the thing? Is that what happened? I mean, I feel like that's unlikely. Is the only place you can go and buy a car in Utah, Tim Dahl, Tim Dahl Mazda? Is that it? Or because, you know, if it had been me and I was trying to do this and it worked once, I'd be like, let's find another dealership, maybe in another state. Let's go somewhere else. far away. Oh, and they also... It, uh, a search of Willis uh, turned up three small bags with a black tar-like substance that later field tested as heroin. So that kind of, <sighs> that explains it. Good fucking, just, just uh, this frustrates me. You so probably could have just afforded to buy the car if you sold the heroin. <laughs> Heroin's not cheap. It just frustrates me so much. They had it. They had it all. It was right there. You won. And. Gah. Why are they so stupid? Ugh. They have at least 11. Well, all right. If you're going to do this, like. Why a Mazda? I know. Like I'm saying, I, I, if, if, if you're getting like, why a Mazda? Is there no other options? But no, apparently Crimson in the chat says there's 11 the others that she's found. He used to, he used or to they fuck found. me up when people stole the testers when I worked at Sephora. Because I'm like, you're already stealing. Steal one that's not Steal open. the good shit. Steal one that's not half empty and full of hepatitis. Right. So, like, if you're already stealing, get a better car. So, uh, going to Japan for the next one. And a lesson we've learned having the pet door open here is that, and, and I know, I know that I think you should leave the, the Darmine doggy door. I know, but actually having the pet door here on our porch open now, we, we've gotten cats, 
We've gotten possums. There's occasionally a raccoon. We it, a lots of things show up randomly because there's no lock on the door. It's open. Think anything can come in there. We understand this, but that's not the real door. That's just the pet door. Here's what happens when you don't fix the lock on the real door. Man finds firefighters sleeping in his living room. Uh, police have arrested a 25-year-old man on suspicion of home invasion after he was found sleeping in another person's home on Sunday morning. According to police, the 53 Is it relevant that he's a firefighter? Apparently, he might have been in garb, as they say. 53-year-old man who lives in the house awoke and found the intruder, who was a firefighter, sleeping on a sofa in the living room and called police. The two men do not know each other. Police say the firefighter was drunk at the time and quoted him as saying, he does remember he entered the house at 5 a.m., but nothing other than that. The lock to the man's house had been broken for some time. See, you know. I'm going to get comments for this, but wow, life is a man. <laughs> a lock on your apartment will just break and you'll leave it that way no woman alive no would not have an elaborate fucking rube goldberg situation until she could get that lock fixed and three large dogs <laughs> like that's i would understand that's a little disconcerting you go out you wake up you go out there's a firefighter on your sofa and you're like, how the, oh, right, right, right. But also, like, how does this happen? I, like, how drunk do you have to be to just wander around trying doors? I mean, it worked. So, you know. Yeah. But, like, is that, like, were you literally just walking around trying doors? One of these is good. I get one of them. I have to. Just one of these has to work. Why would they put them here if they didn't work? That'd be stupid. I have all these doors. Why of them has got to work? Otherwise, it's got to work. I just. Just leaving the lock open. Can you. Like, how much can you blame the dude who just came in and slept on your couch? How much can you really blame him? You are so incredibly lucky that that's the worst thing that happened to you. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this could have been a hell of a lot worse than someone crashing on your couch. <laughs> you could be dead. Yes. Well, if you were dead, we wouldn't be reporting on it. But just fix your fucking lock, dude. Yeah. This weird. All right. This next one, a lot of people sent me this. And uh, this is a scam that could only work on a very specific type of person. Guys, lucky it was a firefighter and not some psychopath. The two are not mutually exclusive, my friend. Just saying. This is, I don't. I don't understand how anyone in their right mind would have thought this was legit, but someone did. Multiple someone did, in fact. Uh, all India pregnant job service, Indian men conned by impregnating women scam. In early December, Mangesh Kumar was scrolling on Facebook when he came across a video from the, quote, all India pregnant job service and decided to check it out. The job sounded too good to be true, money and lots of it, in return for getting a woman pregnant. How did... How... It was, you of course, know why men fell for this, and so do I. It was, of course, too good to be true. So far, the 33-year-old who earns... Uh, about $180 a month. Roughing. Uh, working for a wedding party decoration company has already lost uh, another $200 to fraudsters, and they are asking for more. 
Bot Man Gash from the southern, from the northern state of uh, Bihar, is not the only person to fall for the scam. Deputy Superintendent of Police Kaylin Anand, who heads the cyber cell in Bihar's Nawanda district, told the uh, BBC, uh, Nawada, sorry, uh, that there were hundreds of victims, hundreds of an elaborate con where gullible men were lured to part with their cash on the promise of a huge payday and a night in a hotel with a childless woman. Hundreds. They scammed hundreds. Hundreds of guys. Scam. Well, the scam is here. Over the next couple of weeks, uh, Mangesh was asked to fork out more than uh, $200 to obtain some court documents, some as a safety deposit, and uh, a goods and service tax on the money he was going to get. So they had him put up some money on the promise of the other money he was going to get after he got to have sex, which sounds perfectly reasonable, right? Yeah, no, I mean, you know, you know what it sounds like. What, what does it sound like? Is an MLM. It's multi-level marketing. They only, like at best. Only no at one best, actually. Yes, this is sperm Amway. Yeah, only no one actually gets to have sex is the funny thing. Because it's like, yeah, well, I, I'll. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's all down the line. No, you get to have sex. No, you get to have sex. No one actually gets to have sex. But, like, your best case scenario was sex Amway. <laughs> um, when Mangesh kept asking for the promised money, they sent him a receipt saying they credited his bank account, but the money was on hold and would be paid after he paid an income tax. You know, literally, you know Anna Delphi, right? Hmm. You know who Anna Delvey is, right? I do not, actually. But she was like this socialite scammer who was, she, there's a show about her on Netflix, but um, <laughs> she like scammed all of New York high society for literally years. I think I've heard about her, That's yes. how she did it. Like she would be like, she would produce like fake wire transfers and be like, <clears throat> I don't know why your bank doesn't have the money. They must be lying to you because I paid you, see? Only in this case, it's not just that. It's also, you haven't had sex yet. Right. That's also part of it. So they're like, we'll give you your money and you'll have sex. Just be patient. Okay, but you already took some of my money. Yeah, but you got to pay the... You got to pay the income tax on it. I mean, come on, this is the law, you know. This there is... are way easier ways to pay to have sex, dude. <laughs> like honestly, if he had just paid someone for sex, you'd be better off. He would have at least gotten the sex. Wouldn't have the money. Would have had the sex. It probably would have cost you less money. Hundreds of people fell for this. Hundreds of dudes fell for the hundreds <laughs> hundreds because because men like if i was the one investigating this i'd be like i'm sorry how many fell for this should we really but also do you not ask to look at the contract like okay my job is to impregnate this woman then what's my responsibility because it doesn't matter how much you're paying me if I'm paying it right back out in child support. Like, even if this was legit, you need to read the fine print. <laughs> you, need to, you need to understand the contract. It's, it's, I mean, at that point, if, you, if, if hundreds of people are falling for this, it's like, I mean, should you really prosecute for fuck's sake? I mean, good God. And that's the problem with a lot of cons is they're not technically illegal. Because they're built on getting you to give your money over voluntarily, yeah. and that's not theft. Well, the next one, this one actually is illegal, despite... This is one of those situations, and I kind of love it, where a dude does things that really awful dudes tend to do in the wrong damn circumstance without comprehending. And I love it, because you, you, you deserve this shit, my, my man. You, you fucking deserve this shit. Spirit Airlines passenger asked for flight attendants to join Mile High Club. 
Now you might be asking, why are you reporting on, why, why was anyone reporting on this? Oh, just wait, friends, because it's it, you'll, you'll enjoy this the same way I did, I think. The FBI is investigating Spirit Airlines pastor who allegedly asked flight attendants to join the Mile High Club earlier this week, the Department of Justice announced. Jay Warren Finster, 47, is facing criminal charges for interfering with flight crew members, sexually harassing and assaulting flight attendants, and engaging in otherwise uh, in other disruptive behavior aboard Flight 693 from Louisville, Kentucky to Orlando. But records state that the Detroit native for asked, first asked the lead flight attendant if she wanted to join the, quote, Mile High Club before pulling a second crew member into his seat and asking her the same question. The passenger is also accused of lying on the floor of the plane before being moved to a new seat and requesting entry into the airplane cockpit. Dennis earlier told FBI officials. That's not what it means, dude. That's not that, what it that's means. Not, it's, that's not how that works. It's not, it's not actually a... No. It's not, it's, Finister earlier told FBI officials he had consumed, quote, multiple alcoholic shots to calm his nerves prior to the flight, which he stated was his first, uh, according to the criminal complaint. Convicted charges which violate federal criminal law, Finister faces a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison. See, all right, this is a dude who does this stuff to people, particularly women, in a public setting on a regular basis. But typically, that is not a federal offense. Yeah. But when you're up there, flight attendants are gods. Mm -hmm. They they what they they are they are in charge. And they can burn your whole life down. The FBI is involved now because you fucked around on a fucking plane. Like, god damn, you the first time in your life you're being discouraged. For, I bet you anything. Never before has there ever been consequences yeah. for this. Probably this, not. He's probably astonished this is happening to him. Yeah. He just, just does not. Also, um, clearly it was his first time flying because on Spirit Airlines, even if that was a service they offered, it would be an upcharge. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's a fucking. It's yeah. fucking Spirit. It's Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, you are not Tony Stark. It's not okay when Tony Stark does it either. No, it did. That was that was fucking gross. Yeah, that was. Yeah, it was. Tony Stark is trash. Yeah, he, he, yeah. I look forward to your fucking comments. <laughs> I just it fucking hell. Like you have to imagine. It's not just like I'm surprised he did this. I'm like, oh my god. No, it's like imagine the shit this guy has stumbled through his life doing. For 47 years before you didn't this. You do it because you were drunk. No. I just had some shots to calm my nerves, really. Uh huh. Yeah. It, I've, I've had a shot to calm my nerves for two. One or two, my nerves are calm. I'm still fairly lucid. You went a little past that. You went into the handsy turf. That's yeah. Which is actually hilarious because you probably weren't getting anybody into the Mile High Club anyway. Sir. Yeah, that kind of has an impact on it. Let's be honest. We've got another guy that just the the sheer audacity of this motherfucker is is stunning. Understand, ladies, gentlemen, non-binary friends, understand this. If you go out with someone and it doesn't go well. They are allowed to tell people it didn't go well. They can tell their friends. They can tell their Facebook. They can tell everyone. If you went on a date with them, it didn't go well for whatever reason. They're allowed to do that. This is what happens when you do that to someone who has got skin like Kleenex. This fucking guy. Man sues 27 women after Facebook users call him, quote, clingy and psycho. Chicago man Nico D'Ambrosio is suing 27 women, one man, 20 different parts of the Facebook corporation, Meta, Patreon, GoFundMe, and the website AreWeDatingTheSame.com, claiming they're all responsible for damage incurred when women posted online about alleged negative experience they had on dates with him. 
uh, in an are we dating the same guy? I promise guy you, he group. worships Elon Musk and free speech, though. I promise you. Um, in D'Ambrio's case, according to his complaint, women use the Chicago Are We Dating the Same Guy Facebook group to say he's clingy and ghosted them after sleeping with them. He's been posted here before. The poster said he sent her a slew of texts calling her names because she didn't want to spend the night with him. Uh, another commenter called him a, quote, psycho. Uh, D'Ambrosio filed his complaint on Monday in the District Court for the Northern District of Illinois and is claiming one count each of defamation, intentional infliction of emotional distress, invasion of privacy by false light, civil liability for doxing, misappropriation, unjust enrichment, blah, 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 blah. He claims the defendants, quote, specifically intended to cause plaintiff harm. Oh my God, son. Bro, it's not defamation if it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but oh my, and I, what I love here about this article is we, we often talk about this before Google completely falls apart. Thanks to, oh, you know, machine learning crap, AI. Anytime someone Googles your name from now on, because you brought this lawsuit, this is now what's attached to you forever. It was bad before you literally made it a fucking headline. You made it so much worse. You goddamn child. I have had bad dates. I have had bad breakups. I have had bad flings. I've had all sorts of this stuff. And I've had, you know, I've had people in my past talk about me behind my back about stuff that should be private. Not like bad stuff I did, just like, I'm doing this with you, not the entire fucking world. And that's, that's, it's irritating, but I'm going to take them to, it's not a nice thing to do. No, but you're not taking the fucking court over it. Right. People like it or not within a certain level of, of shittiness are allowed legally to be shitty. I dated a guy who, he was one of those guys who every ex he's ever had is crazy Mm. and was obsessed with him. And he's probably telling other women that about me now. And he's loved to. Obsessed with? Okay. Whatever. Whatever. He told me one chick was schizophrenic. Like every, one of those guys, every ex he ever had was insane. What's the common denominator? No, but, but he's allowed to do that. There's no law against it. He's a dick, but he's allowed to do it. Yeah, and there's also, Mike is mentioning that there's the Section 230 of the Communications Act, blah, 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 that says websites cannot be responsible for stuff you post on it because, you know, yes, blah, blah, blah. So he he, suing Facebook and Patreon. Can you imagine the legal team at Patreon? They get this notification. They're like, I'm fucking sorry. What? (laughs) What what are we being sued for? The hell did we do? What? What the hell is this? Fucking Patreons. Why are we involved? GoFundMe is involved in this. Like, and like the irony is all you had to do to avoid this was not be a shitty bro. Like, did, 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 did have you tried therapy? Maybe <laughs> that might help a lot. I just, oh, therapy would help so many people. So now, yeah, Nico D'Ambrosio, this is you from now on. This you sued all of these. Because yeah, it used to like with the group and everything. Like if you Googled yourself, it would probably be like the third thing down. Right now, after no. like your LinkedIn, whatever. Now it's number one with a bullet. Mm-hmm. All right, last one tonight. This one is actually, I guess, a little fun. We have video. It's been a while. I like I li- this one. I saved this one because this one made me happy in a terrible sort of way. Maybe I should rethink that sort of thing. Uh, where is it? There it is. So this is comes to us from Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, <laughs> I don't even need a lead in for this one. This is too good. Here we go. Let's put the video up here for everybody. Uh, Man in skid loader damages several cars. LPD cruiser at Lincoln Home Depot. 
<laughs> Lincoln, Nebraska. A man driving a uh, skid loader. Uh, What's a skid loader? Uh, it's uh, though those. I think it's pallet loader. I'm not entirely sure. Oh. Um, well, there's Vidya. There's Vidya. Um, <laughs> damage several vehicles. I just watching him go is just so much fun. <laughs> he's having fun. Bless his heart. Like he's going to jail, but he's having fun. <laughs> Just, just go out there and enjoy yourself. <laughs> what do you? They're doing like bumper cars oh, yeah. with the cops. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And yeah, like the cop doesn't know what the fuck to do. He's like, I guess maybe if I get in the in the way. Oh no, he's hitting me. Man, That's not gonna work. Man driving a skid loader damaged several vehicles. Around 2.30 p.m., officers were called to the U-stop near 73rd Street. Uh, Samuel Perot, 36, was driving a skid loader and damaging vehicles in the parking lot. Man, the look on his face. He's had a bad day, even though he had a good day. When officers arrived, Perot ran the skid loader. I mean, maybe it was the haircut that, was, <laughs> that just pushed him over the edge, because... When officer arrived, Piro uh, rammed the skid loader into a police cruiser. The officer got out and drew his weapon. Piro then entered the sk then exited the skid loader and was taken into custody. So he was just running around the, the Home Depot par parking lot, smashing into shit. Um, also damaged two nearby businesses with the skid loader. The skid loader was owned by uh, Piro's employee. He had taken it to the gas station. Employer. With a employ oh, sorry, yeah, employer, sorry. He had taken it to a gas station with a company-owned truck and trailer. Yeah, boss, I'm going to fill up the, uh, the, the, the skid loader. Okay. What the fucking, the fuck happened what, here? What happened in between there? Like, all we have in between there is little SpongeBob a few minutes later. A few. <laughs> he saw what his... What happened in between, I'm going to go fill up the skid loader and mayhem? <laughs> <laughs> I just, just, you know, he had a. I can understand just that you're at the mole, you're at the filling it up, you're at the gas station, and just, you know, why not? Like, why not? Why not? Something in you just goes insane. <laughs> But bless his heart, though. He said, just getting out, just smashing into shit. Didn't hurt nobody. Just smashed up some cop car. Well, and some regular people's cars. Some, some regular people's great. cars, yeah. It's not, it's not fantastic, but, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I guess there, there are worse things you could do if you're going to go a little nuts. But it's not great. And you're probably going to lose your job. Because uh... that's not yours lose your job and other things too yeah just, uh, something happened from the moment he left the work to filling it up at the gas station something happened we are missing pages from the script yeah it's like it's there's a real not here you know i i have to explain that reference to the children see they when, when films used to be on film which is why we call it film uh they used no, no, no. Christopher Nolan still does it. Oh. They know. They used to have these big cans with wrapped up, and sometimes the movies were on more than one. And when a reel was missing, see? Bless your hearts. Oppenheimer was on, I think they said, like, 11 miles of film. Jesus Christ. Fucking Nolan, man. Oh, uh, so yeah, the first thing we Good learned... Movie, though. The first thing we learned this week is... um. Everybody has one bad day, and it looks like it looks different for everyone. Some people take it so far. Some people just go crazy in the Home Depot parking lot with heavy machinery. Sometimes it's Michael Douglas and falling down. And sometimes it's Austin Powers <laughs> on a steamroller. <laughs> Whatever the fuck he was riding, trying to make a hundred point turn. I was just bless his heart. I could, I can't, I could be mad at him, but I can't even really be mad at him. We learned if you try to sue everyone who's ever rejected you romantically, even if you win, you lose. 
that's that's we've learned that you can go your entire life behaving badly until you hit the one situation where someone can do some shit about it. <laughs> so think carefully. We've learned you can steal money from dudes. You tell them they can have sex. That's I mean, did we have to learn that, though? I guess not. I guess it's kind of self. We knew that. We've learned sometimes you can go you to bed. You don't even have to offer the money. That was the funny. That's the funny part about the scam. You probably didn't need to offer any money. You could have just said, pay us money and impregnate a woman. And dude still would have signed up for that. Yeah. You, uh, we found out sometimes if you don't fix your door lock, you'll wake up with a firefighter asleep on your couch. Although some people probably might be really cool with that. Option. If you're lucky, if you're lucky. <laughs> and finally this week, we've learned if you manage to get away scot-free with your own fucking car, because you just got, don't you won. Don't, don't do this. Greedy. Don't just. Don't. I would love to play blackjack with your ass. Damn. Your ass would hit on a 32. 